In general, you don't want to use a bigger brush than you need because you end up you end up changing more data than is necessary. And the more data you're changing at once, the more likely it's going to be visible as an as you know as a changed part of the scene. Someone looks at it and goes, "Hold on, didn't there's something should have been there? I see like a weird shadow of an image." Um, yeah, so you, you don't want to do any bigger of a brush than you need. But I'm going to show you a big brush that's it's going to kind of impress you. Okay, so let's just get rid of a couple lines here. We'll just get rid of that line there, like that pole. I want to get rid of that pole. I want to get rid of that. Okay, that's easy. Oh, now see here, it grabbed, it maybe grabbed something from over here, so it wasn't perfect, but that's okay. We'll just click it again and, and get rid of it. Um, let's do let's do a little bigger. Let's go, let me zoom out of this a little bit, and let's go for a bigger brush, and uh, let's, let's try and get rid of this reflection in the lake. Actually, I don't think I've tried quite this big, but let's just see what it does. Not too shabby. Now, in a case like that, when you, if you start to see a little pattern, see there's this little pattern in there, that is definitely because we're doing such a big brush, doing so much at once. But then we just go back in there for a second hit. We'll just go ahead and get rid of that, maybe click a couple times. And you can click or click and drag. It just depends on what you're going after there. Um, as you start to really pile up corrections on top of each other, you may start to get some weird artifacting. But as long as you're paying attention as you go, I think you'll find it to be quite impressive. Let's get rid of that. See, and like even there, it kind of filled in the reflected part of the water. Okay, so those, those were all really easy, easy fixes. Let's do something a little bit harder. Let's go for, let's get rid of this lens flare. I like the lens flare, but let's just say that you don't. So we're going to go up here and get rid of this. I'm going to go a little bit bigger on there. And I'll just kind of click, maybe I'll go down here. I'm going to overlap the edge of the mountain a little bit, click and drag up. Well, that's pretty good. I mean, that rebuilt the edge of the mountain there. Looking pretty good. All right, now here's, here's the biggie. So this worked, right, caveat here. This totally worked when I tried it before. I'm going to try it again. Fingers crossed. This is kind of a big one, I think. I don't know. Maybe it's not. But I think this is a big one. We're going to try to get rid of this whole big smear reflection there. So I'm going to go for quite a big, well, not that big. Let's go for a bigger brush. And I'm just going to go even over the trees. <laughs> That's too big. That's pretty cool. Now, look, there is a little, okay, we saw a little bit of funkiness up here. So let me just clean that up. And maybe I'll clean that part up there. You know, I got to say, that is pretty darn good. I'm getting a little weirdness happening in there. There we go. And I would say that is, that's pretty good. If you put the two images side by side, if you look really close, it looks to me like these two trees are the same. But if you didn't know, I mean, come on, if you hadn't seen the, the original in there, you wouldn't recognize that. I think that's pretty good. So that is the basis of the, the not healing, what are they called? Healing? Is it called healing? Repair, the repair tool. Uh, definitely pretty good. I am, I am impressed with that. Um, I think Lightroom's tool, Lightroom works very well, but it can be a little slow. It can get a little slow as you start to do a lot of them. And part of it is because in Lightroom, everything is live, right? When you do three or four little blotches, great. But as you get into hundreds of them, they're live and you can undo them at any time. You can turn that layer off. And so things can definitely get slow as it gets really, really big. Because these are pixel edit, pixel level changes, you can undo it, but I can't, you know, 1500 steps from now decide that I want to undo that, clo that uh, uh, healing, the repairing, and not undo other stuff. So, you know, give and take, give and take. But, uh, but this is pretty impressive. Okay, so now let's take a look at the clone tool, and then we're going to switch over to a different image, reuse the healing, not the clone, we're going to use the clone on a portrait, but reuse the healing and then look at the rest of the tools as well. So back to it, let's go to clone. And Clone has a couple other options on there. Let's zoom into this. You've got your brush size and softness, pretty self-explanatory. Opacity, if you're going to, uh, if you want to have something that is not going to completely overwrite the image, you want to have like a fader, faded, more faded, faded version of a, of a clone spot, you've got that. You also have your blend modes, which I think is really cool. Um, you see this, you've seen this throughout the app. Whenever there is a, a brush with an opacity slider, I think it's always on the opacity, you have the ability to change the blend mode. So that's the multiply, add, divide, sorry, whatever. All those blend modes. Pretty cool. I don't know exactly how I'd use it, but I think it's exciting that it's there. Always like options. Okay. Uh, so you've got those. I'm just going to leave it on normal. you got sample all layers. We talked about that. And then fix source position. I'll explain that in a moment. It's a little easier to show than to talk about. So fixed source position is on right now. I'm going to position the source. Let's go ahead and zoom back into 100% on here. Um, pan this up. And let's say that I want to have a second row of these, these uh, yeah, I don't know, sticks, fence, whatever. So I go out here and you can see wherever I put this as I'm... You've just watched a five-minute sample of a live training video. 
To see the rest of it, head to photoapps.expert slash live where you can purchase and download it or sign up as a member. Members can stream any live training video as often as they like and have access to video tips and other exclusive member bonuses. To learn more about membership, head to photoapps.expert slash member.